Welcome sixth grade math students. While I may not be here today for you in the classroom, I did leave you some MSEP review. So these are some things that we would expect will show up on your test very soon that we're taking in May. And it's kind of a collection of different skills. So I want you to dig in and do as much as you can. Uh, if your guest teacher gives you some time to work and then you talk with each other a little bit, that would be an appropriate time to come back and do some checking with me and make any necessary changes before turning this in today. I want to make sure that you are on the math review side one. So you're looking for this Roman numeral one over here to make sure you're in the right place. All right, uh, when you are ready to check, or maybe you're just going to complete this with me today, depends on the guest teacher and their decision, I suppose. Uh, here goes. What is the value of the expression below when z equals seven? Well, this is interesting. I see an expression and there's a z sitting here. And we've had a problem like this before in the past where we took out the variable and put in the value. So in this case, I'm not here today. So we take out the Schumann and put in the sub. Same concept. So let me rewrite this for you. I'm going to keep the 3, but I'm going to replace the z with a 7. And I'm going to write subtract 3 because that comes from the original problem. There's something a little bit dangerous that just happened to me, and I hope you remember back, that between this three and the Z, there's secretly something happening here. It doesn't turn into a two-digit number of 37 necessarily. There's secretly multiplication happening between a variable and its coefficient, or the number up front. So I need to show you multiplication. Notice I'm using a dot to show multiplication today, just because a lot of you the other day said, hey, what does this dot mean? So. Just kind of a friendly reminder, there's some multiplication happening here. Now, now, not only that, I need you to refer to PEMDAS, order of operations. You're also going to see that in today's activities a little bit if you're my sixth grade math group. So, are there any parentheses? No. Are there any exponents? Bummer. But is there multiplication or division? There is. So, 3 times 7, well, that's 21, and I still need to take away 3. So I'm bringing down anything I haven't used yet. No more multiplication division, but there is some addition or subtraction. So let's subtract. 21 take away 3. Let's see. 20, 19, 18, counting backwards. I'm going to get an answer of 18. Now if you do this well, you're going to notice you just made me some pizza. I call this pizza style math. Ooh. Or order of operations. Kind of makes this pizza design. This upside down triangle if you were being organized with line by line work. Good, there's my answer, B. Let's try the next one. Oh, which expression is equivalent to 32? So this is also kind of order of operations, isn't it? This reminds me of PEMDAS. Again, we're going to look for parentheses first. So for this first one, what's 30 plus 6? 36. And then I'm going to have to divide that by 3. Oh, 36 divided by 3. The answer is 12. Well, that's definitely not equivalent to 32. A is a bad answer. If I had a cross-off tool for the M-step, I'd cross that off. Part B. I see some parentheses we should do first. What is 9 plus 7? Hopefully you say 16. And 2 times that out front. Well, 2 times 16. Let me think. I could stack it up if I wanted to. Or I could say 2 times 10 is 20. 2 times 6 is 12 more. 20 plus 12. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get 32. Hey, this is a good answer. B is possible. But let's see if there are any other possibilities because on the M step, oftentimes there's more than one good answer. Oh, parentheses again. Better do that first. What's 3 plus 5? 8. And 9 times that out front. Hmm. 9 times 8. Well, think of your facts here or use your 9's tricks if you will. 1 less than 8 is 7 and 7 plus 2 gets me 9. Oh yeah, that's right. The answer is 72. Well, that's not what I'm looking for. That needs a cross-off tool for sure. And we weren't looking for 12. We weren't looking for 72. We already found one good answer right here. That one equals 32. Let's try this next one. But there are no, are no parentheses. So cross that off. Are there any exponents? Bummer. Is there multiplication or division? And the answer is yes. This has to happen first. What is 2 times 4? Hopefully you're saying 8. And I still have 6 plus that out front. Oh, last step, 6 plus 8 gets me 14. Well, this is no good. That is definitely not equivalent to 32. There's only one good answer here. Choice B looks like the correct one. Let's take a look a little bit farther. See if I can move my toolbar for you. 
The third problem on the top row, what is the product of 5 eighths times 3 fourths? Well, I don't know, they wrote that way too small for me to work with. So I'm going to rewrite the problem and I suggest you do also. Multiplication. Hmm, what are my multiplication rules when it comes to fractions? Oh, I could cross simplify. Is there anything that 8 and 3 share as a common factor? Mm, just 1. That won't change it much. How about 5 and 4? Uh, just 1. So I guess I'm going to use the next step that I know, which is to multiply straight across. What is 5 times 3? 15. What is 8 times 4? 32. I should probably see if I can simplify this, but if I couldn't cross simplify and these fractions were both in simplest form, I think I have a final answer. B is correct. All right, let's look a little bit farther. Well, I might have to scroll this a little bit so we can see our choices. Again, I want you to be making changes with us so that when you turn this in today, you have some good answers, just like me. And some good work. All right, the fourth problem here. There probably should be a line separating these, just so you know. Looks like kind of got cut off. The table below shows how much money a grocery store receives for selling different amounts of asparagus. If the unit rate is constant, oh, we were talking about unit rates lately. What are the total sales for 12 pounds of asparagus? Well, asparagus sales. I have the number of pounds and the total sales. So let's see, the four pounds goes with $10. The six pounds goes with 15. I don't really see a pattern going from 4 to 10 or 6 to 15 or 8 to 20 very nicely. But I do see a different pattern. I notice this. To go from 2, sorry, to go from 4 to 6, looks like they're adding 2. And to go from 6 to 8, looks like they're adding 2. Looks like there's a pattern happening here. They're adding 2 each time. Another way to see this is to say, hey, from 4 to 8, they doubled it. And then from 4 to 12, they tripled it, like four times three. All right, let's check out the other side. Are there any patterns you're noticing? Ooh, from 10 to five, 15, they added five. From 15 to 20, they added five again. Looks like this pattern's gonna continue. There's another way we could do that. We could go from 10 to 20, they doubled it. Or from 10 to the very bottom row, they're gonna have to triple it. All right, in a minute, I'm trying to figure out 12 pounds of asparagus and how much that's going to cost. That's sitting right here, isn't it? You could just continue this pattern, I suppose. 20 plus 5 more on this side would get me 25, plus 5 more would get me 30. And I also could double check it this way. Well, $10 times $3, or sorry, $10 times 3 groups gets me $30. Oh, I see a final answer. Choice C. Oops, I didn't do a very good job of grabbing C. My pens are off a little bit, so make sure I can tell that you have choice C. A, B, and D, no good. $30 is a final answer. All right, so this one was really built on patterning. They never asked me to find a unit rate. Instead, we found a rate. Next, what is the value of the expression below? Well, I'm given something in the thousands divided by 24. I'm going to set this up as a long division. So the first number dives in. 1,536. It's called the dividend. The second number is called the divisor. He's the supervisor. He jumps out. And we're actually going to divide. So let's give this a try. I don't see any answers into decimals or any mixed numbers or anything. So I'm thinking the decimal that's at the back is going to just move straight up. All right. Does 24 go into 1? Bummer. Make sure you show me that you tried. Does 24 go into 15? Not so much. Does 24 go into 153? Sure does, but how many times? Eh, well, 24 is close to 25. Let's think quarters. How many quarters would that take? 25, 50, 75, 100. 125, 150. Ooh, six quarters would get me pretty close. So let's, let's see what I get from six times 24. Well, six times four is 24. Keep the 4, regroup the 2. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 more, 14. 144. There's a little regroup happening here. 13 take away 4 gets me 9. 4 take away 4 is 0. 1 take away 1 is 0. And double check. Is your remaining piece smaller than your divisor? 
Oh good, things are going well. Bring down the next place value and let's divide again. Does 24 go into 96? The answer is yes. And I would really dig over here and see, hey, what looked like some good choices to you? I know choice A should be crossed off right now. So I know I'm looking for either four, five, or eight in this last place value. Well, I noticed something. I want a six in the ones place, don't I? So one of those numbers times the four is gonna get me a six in the ones place. Oh, I noticed four times four is 16, five times four is 20, eight times four is 32. Well, only one of those ends in a six, doesn't it? Oh, four times four is 16, and I want the six sitting here. I'm gonna try four. All right, well, four times four is 16. Keep the six and regroup the one. Four times two is eight plus one more. Perfect, 96. I see a final answer is 64, choice B. You could cross off the others, but actually I didn't know those were bad answers until this moment, so I feel pretty good about the way we showed our work there. Long division. And on the M step, if there's a long division problem, you're probably gonna have to show your steps. Probably no calculator provided. All right, the last one for today. Which expression is equivalent to 100,000? Whoa, how do I know? Well, let's take a look at this. Do you remember what these exponents mean? 10 to the fourth power. That really means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Oh, that really means I'm going to get one, two, three, four zeros in my answer. One, two, three, four zeros. Oh, that's only 10,000. That's not big enough. Choice A is no good. Well, let's try this again. Choice B. I'm going to try what that means. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's four of them. Times 10. Well, that's like saying I'm going to use my tens rule. Uh, 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000, times 10 is 10,000, times 10 is 100,000, I think. Oh, look, I have five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Wasn't that what I was looking for? Cha-ching. Choice B looks good, five zeros. There's another way to go about getting there. So for a quick minute, maybe you want to think of a pattern. I hope you know the rule that 10 to the first power really means just 10 by itself. And 10 to the second power really means 10 times itself, and it gets us 100. Oh my gosh, two zeros and an exponent of two. Cool, try this, 10 to the third power. Oh, that means 10 times 10 times 10, and that actually gets me 1,000. It's like taking that 100 times 10 again, 1,000. One, two, three zeros, and the exponent was three. I'm noticing something here. If I have a one, two, three, four, five zeros, my exponent better be five. There's another great way to get there. All right, this side of your warm-up should be done for today. It should be fixed up. You should have all the changes I made or some other thinking beyond that that you were able to use to help get there. And your name, date, and hour is on the top. It is time to turn this into your color hour tray. So why don't we find the student at your table who has a birthday closest to today? which is April 23rd, 2018. So person with a birthday closest to today, go ahead, collect your papers and let's turn them in.